Well, hello there, and thank you for coming by the Ramsey channel. I am very glad that you did. And today, me and Toby, my good cat, are uh, going to be taking a look at the very beautiful Eastern Press edition of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, which we can see peeking over the top of Toby there. And here it is. Uh, as you see, it's uh, a very large... Uh, very large volume um, and uh, has this quite striking uh, cover design I think um, really really a pretty thing certainly one of the more prophetic books that predicted uh, quite a bit of the the culture that we're currently living in um, not all books of prophecy have to be of a spiritual nature or as supposedly divinely inspired or or uh, a supernatural nature um, this is a work of fiction that just uh, predicted the future I think rather more accurately than uh, than what uh, George Orwell did in 1984 which uh, this book is sometimes compared to um, here is the uh, beautiful spine compartment uh, this is of a really high quality leather that Easton Press used on this one and uh, I think very very attractive it's probably showing up black here it's it's really more of a dark gray it's not a super jet black uh, the leather on this is is sort of a dark gray uh, with maybe a little hint of blue in it um, and uh, that's what it looks like front and back are just the same um, and it will have the usual features that we'll see in an Easton Press book here with its more end papers. And uh, kind of an interesting half title page there. And then here is our frontispiece piece and title page, Red New World. This is Aldous Huxley's novel. And it has his forward in it, and it also has a uh, unique introduction by Ashley Montague, and uh, this contains a wealth of very interesting, um, not necessarily beautiful, but fascinating uh, illustrations uh, by the artist Mara McAfee. Um, and um, very nice uh, color author portrait there. Um, I suppose... You can't you can't uh, accuse the book of being over designed, but it definitely has a little more uh, design elements than we sometimes see in, in your average book. I really like the use of the margins uh, in this. The margins are are very wide, generous, which you want in a fine book, uh, and uh, they have. Uh, taken full advantage of the wideness of those margins as we see there um, really nice the book is a little bit uh, it, 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 it has not become a bit dated um, it seems strange to us in this day and age and it seems a little bit perhaps overdone or even like a parody but when you start considering uh, the state of the society in this book and thinking about the parallels to what we're living in, uh, you know, an example of one of the very attractive, uh, attractive works of art that adorn this book. Uh, when you think about the society that we're living in right now, it has so many parallels to the world state that Huxley depicts in this, I, I say, prophetic novel. Um, we are a society under control, I believe. And um, we are a socially engineered, quite deliberately. And uh, instead of being a society like Orwell predicted that is... Uh, afraid of people who ban books this book Brave New World 
posits a society that wouldn't bother to ban a book because they wouldn't bother to read a book. Uh, it's about a society whose uh, every, every uh, desire is contemplated and uh, tried to uh, tried to be accounted for in uh, human desires and genuine emotions. Anything that doesn't uh, affect the overall happiness and tranquility of the greater society, uh, it, they attempt to eliminate. But not through forceful or violent means, but through pleasure. Uh, and if that doesn't uh, accurately announce the kind of society that we're living in right now, I don't know what does. If you think, you know, that we have, we, we don't have one all-purpose drug like Soma, as Huxley depicts in this book. Look at this picture, isn't that cool? Look at that, how wild that is. Uh, we don't have just a single drug like Soma. We have hundreds upon hundreds of drugs like Soma. Uh, you know, all of our antidepressants, our anti-anxiety medications, all of that. You know, and the medical establishment puts children on these kind of medications, whether they need it or not, from a very, very early age. They're not injected into the womb, uh, but uh, they may as well be. I mean, they, they, they start children on these anti-anxiety medications and hyperactivity disorder medications and all that stuff, you know, as, as early as possible to keep everybody as docile as possible. And just in case you don't get your medication to keep you socially in line, we have all of these devices and entertainments that are meant to, uh, to keep us distracted and happy and in line and not worrying about anything important. And I think Huxley's book, you know, really predicted the life that we're all living right now. And in some way, the, the life we're living right now is more terrifying than, than uh, the one actually predicted in this book. Um, anyway, I hope you're, uh, you're appreciating just how beautifully laid out this thing is. Um, Easton Press books are always beautiful, and this one's really no exception. The, uh, the paper quality that they use is always first rate, always acid free, always acid, well it's not acid free, it's acid neutral, uh, always designed to last for a lifetime. Look at the disturbing, the disturbing imagery going on there and how much you can see about the kind of personalities of the people involved. Look at these, look at these faces and what they, they reveal. Look at him. Um, you have to wonder if these are, uh, Perhaps even in, even based on real life models, some of them look so much like like you know authentic people. I think, um, but anyway, it, it it's 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 it, it's a great book. I'm not sure that it has the same impact now that it would have had in the 30s when it was published. When when was the original publication of this? I'm thinking it was like 1932, 33, something like that. If I could find. The information in here. Yes, I was right. It was first published in 1932, and uh, we're going we're going nearly a hundred years now from the publication of this book. And uh, while everything hasn't come true that's predicted in this book in precisely the ways that Huxley predicted it, it's all come true. We are living not just in a material world, but we are living in a Soma world. We are living in a distracted, blissfully stupid uh, world that is not really meant for the good of the individual, but for the good of the whole thing as a conglomerate and corporate entity. That's the world, certainly in the United States. That we're living in perhaps parts of Europe and you know other places that I'm not familiar with um, perhaps not so much there but in the United States we are living in Huxley's novel so but anyway there you go 
a beautiful edition with a very high quality of leather, a high quality of paper, beautiful, generous fonts, interesting margin use and wide margins, gorgeous illustrations as we just looked at, and altogether a very well designed and well presented book. And um, if you think it no longer has anything to say uh, to people today, I suggest you go back and read it again because I think in a lot of ways it's more relevant now that this has actually happened and taken place than it was nearly a hundred years ago when it was written and first appeared. So, certainly a great and classic book, a book that uh, frequently appears on greatest novels of the 20th, 20th century lists, as well as, you know, greatest English novels of all time. Uh, one hell of a book. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it. Toby doesn't seem too excited about it there, do you, buddy? Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, on behalf of me and Toby, I hear that the grandfather clock is announcing that it is noontime, and I think we both probably are ready for lunch. So, with the striking of that clock, Toby and I will leave you, and we will see you again on another video in due course. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye-bye.